for your patience um, and thank you again for joining as well um, for those of you where it's evening or early morning for some of you in Asia who are joining as well. Um, we're really excited to have Dr. Cogram on our call today. Um, as we discussed last month um, in the call, he's um, been busy this summer and this, um, this fall like all of us and we have a lot of exciting updates that we'll let him um, present to you and, and talk to you about. Um, but we just want to kick off for a few minutes and um, have a bit of discussion at the end as well. So for housekeeping purposes, we're going to mute all of you um, right now just because sometimes we do get some background noise. Um, and then we'll open up for discussion. Feel free, we'll, you can unmute yourself at that point or you can type questions into the chat as well if you'd like to do that. Uh, but we wanted to kind of make sure everybody could hear and and didn't want to have any interference with background noise. So uh, again, please feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question, but um, we want to get started and, and let Dr. Cogram say hello to you and, and welcome all of you to, um, to this call. Thank you for joining. I know it's, it's early or late for some of you, but we're excited to have you on the call. Thanks. Thanks so much, Petra. And I want to thank Petra and Robin and Patrick and the whole team here, all of you uh, for joining us and giving me this opportunity to engage with all of you. I'm going to just really try to share with 10 or 15 minutes, but mostly we wanted this to be an open discussion and dialogue. I think you heard from the last call that we are fully sort of, um, sort of embedded here in downtown Phoenix at our new location the students, faculty, and staff, uh, and alums that have come to visit us and community members and partners are really excited about the new space. Uh, the classrooms are super fabulous and has you know, sort of the latest technology. Uh, we're able to engage with one another in, in sort of a creative way that um, the sort of closer sort of headquarters that we are in now allows us to do. Uh, we had our first, obviously, opening and welcoming of new students. And for me, it was my first time uh, doing our fabulous flag, flag ceremony, which many of you have done uh, and been part of. So there's a lot of town. We're obviously still unpacking boxes and getting all that <laughs> sorted out and uh, hybridizing the space we're in. But we really want to welcome any of you that who might be traveling this way to join us and see how great the new space is. Uh, albeit temporary as we design the new building, which I'll talk, uh, our parliament building, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I think I also would say is that we have some big events coming up, and if you're around, we'd welcome you to be here. On uh, November 1st, we're going to have an open house. Uh, November 16th, our first regional night downtown, again, bringing that wonderful uh, Thunderbird tradition here to our new space and location. And uh, there are some other events that are coming, so we would welcome you to join us and participate, but just also to say that we are engaging with the community here and bringing our traditions and the way we do things at Thunderbird here. Since I started, and even before I started formally July 1st, as you all know, we've been, uh, we've undertaken a, a series um, of big moves in addition to our physical move downtown. Uh, let me just try to, you know, go through a, three or four of these, but mostly just to set up the conversation. The first of which is to, we've undertaken a, a very uh, proactive strategy development, business plan development process. Uh, we've put together a set of financial models for the future of the school. We have identified uh, four key targets for us to reach over the next five years. 500 residential graduate students here uh, in um, Phoenix, uh, 1,000 undergraduate residential students, 2,000 online students, both undergraduate and graduate, uh, and about $30 million in executive education uh, revenue. We put together a business and financial model that allows us to see how we can get there, what kind of investments we need to make in faculty and marketing and programs and so forth. So we have that available and that we've been developing that as we go. Uh, as part of that, we've been engaging faculty who are incredibly re-energized and engaged uh, again, in the future of the school after having, you know, a difficult 10 years, not only faculty, of course, but all of you as alums and, and staff, uh, but we're back on the path again. And in the curriculum transformation, we've made some, we're making some very large changes, which we're very excited about. Uh, I'll go through the sort of the general aspects of those changes, but happy to answer more questions and um, engage in the discussion around it. The 
first and major change we're making is that we've decided to integrate our two core residential graduate programs, the MA in Global Affairs and Management and the MGM. Now we're going to have a, a single MGM program, Masters in Global Management, uh, and uh, students can specialize in global business or global affairs. They can address with our sister school, science, uh, uh, nonprofit management, uh, design thinking. And so we'll have this si single integrated MGM degree, very much like we used to have the MIM degree, but in a sort of 21st century way. Um, the core of that degree will be an applied learning experience like our uh, Thunderbird Emerging Market Labs. All students will now take an applied learning, will take applied learning credits, six core credits. In addition, there will be a, a set of core courses uh, that all students will take, but that's been slimmed down and, and, and made more sort of streamlined. Um, but all students will take those. And then they will uh, continue on in their concentrations and specializations. We've been doing, as part of that strategy in business development, a lot of market research with prospective students, as well as um, looking at all of our data from uh, surveys with all of you as alumni, especially the recent ones, the last five to 10 years, to see what was most beneficial about your Thunderbird uh, experience on the curriculum side, as well as um, beyond the curriculum side as well as been engaging with secondary data analysis and primary interviews with, with current, past, and future employers so that we really have a sense of what consumers, so to speak, are demanding uh, of the new Thunderbird, Thunderbird 2.0. And so we feel very strongly that the curriculum that we've designed now, this MGM program, both meets the aspirations and needs of a whole new generation of students that are looking for Yes, core global business skills, fluencies, competencies, uh, as well as specializations in areas that can really um, excite them, inspire them, and make them ready for the job market. Inversely, from the employer side, we're really getting a lot of positive feedback that this approach, uh, where students um, get these three types of skills and fluencies, on the one hand, advanced cognitive uh, um, reasoning and problem solving, complex problem solving skills, Secondly, social mastery skills around emotional intelligence, global mindset, and so forth. And third, technical and technological sort of fluencies. That, that combination, uh, along with the very core practical applied learning approach that we're taking, is really exciting. There's going to be a healthy do dose of entrepreneurial and uh, entrepreneurial sort of thinking and entrepreneurism as well. So we're really excited about launching this new version of the integrated MGM degree in fall of 2019 and we're already out there uh, recruiting along those lines and we need your help uh, to bring uh, the very best globally diverse student body we can have uh, going forward. In addition, in fall for fall of 2019, we're going to be launching a new program called the Masters in Global Leadership and Strategy. This program is for those with much more advanced, uh, much more experience, those who are headed to the C-suite or equivalent um, in their respective sectors or industries or fields. And that program is gonna have, uh, it's gonna be a year long and it's gonna uh, occur in six uh, periods of about eight days in different global hubs around the world. One of the things we did over the last month is bring together all of our global hubs uh, Moscow, which is our longest standing, old standing global hub, uh, Geneva, Dubai, and our most recent one, Tokyo. We also have, through ASU, our partnership with ASU, strong bases in DC and increasing Los Angeles. And so the idea with this Masters in Global Leadership and Strategy is that we're going to be supporting uh, our participants by really engaging in the field around the world. A lot of the coursework, so to speak, will be done online and then it'll be practical experiences in these different hubs around the world. We're really excited about that particular program. And then looking down the line into fall of 2020, we're looking to relaunch a sort of renewed MA in Global Affairs and Management in DC, as well as a potential uh, MGM in creative industries, uh, creative enterprises in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, so we're really excited about the way the residential, if we could put it, curriculum is going to be, um, is advancing on the graduate side. Uh, in addition, on the online program side, 
We are putting our undergraduate program online. We already have now over 200 undergraduates, and that's continuing to grow in vibrancy and, and, and the range of students that we're drawing and the quantity. Uh, it's amazing to engage with these underbirds, as you know, we call them. Um, and, you know, and, and even though in the past, uh, at least for, for many years, we didn't have undergraduate programs, my strong belief is that's a, it's a fabulous part of our portfolio and increasingly young people are um, doing amazing things, as we all know, around the world in terms of global leadership, management, entrepreneurship. So that's really exciting. And we are turning around and, and transforming executive education. So we feel like we're, we're starting to make really good progress on each of those fronts. Uh, so the move downtown, uh, strategy and business plan and the strong financial model, the curriculum transformation, uh, and now the design of the permanent new building. What we're trying to do, as you all know, and many of you have heard me uh, sort of talk about the vision of uh, Thunderbird going forward, is really for, for us to again be the vanguard of the vanguard in terms of global leadership uh, management business education, but to do so leaning into the 21st century, and by that I mean really being uh, focused on the fourth industrial revolution. By the fourth industrial revolution, we're talking about the physical, biological, and digital technologies that are transforming everything in our world today, from how we get to work to how work is organized in our industri industries, our global supply chains through blockchain, um, the way we work, the future of work with artificial intelligence, uh, to um, to our health and 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 the planet, and so. The way we're designing the building is very much to bring the traditions uh, and the core identity and the Thunderbird mystique that we've had for over 70 years into the new building while also leaning into this 21st century. Uh, and the key there is then if you think about the building and if you can imagine this for a second, we're going to have five stories in this new building. Uh, in fact, the street that the, the sort of block that we're going to be on we're working with the city of Phoenix to rename the street One Global Place to honor our traditions, uh, for example. Um, we're not fully there yet, so <laughs> don't, uh, you know, don't, don't say that we've got that done, but we're definitely working really hard to get that done because we want to bring that with us along with many other traditions. But as you enter this, the first floor, the ground floor of this five-story building, it's very much going to be, and, and the outside of the building, Everyone will know that this is the Thunderbird School of Global Management, and it will be a very global building. The ground floor will be very forward-looking. We're going to we're looking into a series of different types of sort of technologically um, sort of uh, uh, inspired globes that that invoke the globe back in Glendale, but take us into the future that are incredibly digital and 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 um, inspiring, and you know create that wow factor. Uh, we're also going to be having a global innovation, entrepreneurship, and applied learning hub space there um, for applied learning, emerging market labs, global startup teamwork, and so forth. Uh, we're talking about having an event space, the global hub itself, that's going to be sort of uh, allow for amazing lectures, concerts of all kinds, again, globally abused. All the building uh, on the ground floor, will, we're creating a way that'll be indoor and outdoor. So when it's not <laughs> incredibly hot here in uh, Phoenix, we can we can really you know sort of spread out onto the amazing outside as well as have events on the inside. On that first floor, we'll also have a global marketplace uh, with you know coffees, teas, foods, knickknacks roll around the world, and the thunder shop. So that first floor will really be a place of global energy and inspiration and engagement and collaboration um, uh, that we're really excited about and very technologically infused. As we sort of move our way, and if you could think of a kind of spiral up to the fifth floor, the narrative that we're trying to create in the building, the concept is that we're going back in global history and Thunderbird history, such that by the fifth time we get to the fifth and top floor, we're back to the sort of origins and the soul of Thunderbird. So the fifth floor will be where the pub will be. It'll be uh, a sort of wonderful space, again, for Thunderbird students, alumni, faculty, staff, and other partners to engage with one another, as the pub did in our historic Glendale campus. Um, it'll be on the fifth floor, indoor, outdoor, and it'll sort of 
have a lot of our history and tradition sort of built into the design of the, of the pub. The second, just going back to the middle floor, is the second floor will be the integrated floor for student success. Everything from rec recruitment to student advising to student clubs to career management to alumni engagement. The third floor will be our classrooms, primary classrooms floor, and we're designing the classrooms with 21st century sort of pedagogy in mind, inverting the classrooms, active learning, lots of technology, faculty in the center of the room with breakout uh, tables all around. Um, and, and tablets on the tables and so forth and so on. So we're, we're creating a learning environment that, again, reinforces this global leadership, collaboration, global mindsets for the 21st century, fourth industrial revolution. And then the fourth floor is where we'll have faculty uh, offices, centers, neighborhoods, as well as executive education. So we're really excited. Each of the floors will have different lounges uh, as we're designing it to invoke different regions of the world. And of course, not all of this will be into the final building, and there'll be other things we're gonna to continue to add. But what I wanna share with you is that we're very much on our way to designing uh, an iconic and, and um, you know, sort of a building worthy of the Thunderbird uh, brand identity and tradition. And so we're really excited about that. Uh, and we'll be sharing more about the building as we get more of the designs uh, and in visual form to all of you. I want to stop because I want to engage and hear your questions and thoughts. I think I want to just say that our three top priorities, the first and the most important top priority, which we need all of your support and engagement on, is to help us recruit, as I said, the most globally diverse, quality, high quality Thunderbird uh, student body we can going into the future. Um, we're really back uh, growing again, uh, but we want to reinforce that because what I've learned from all of you and what's been so amazing throughout the last 70 years, 71 years, has been, 72 years, has been um, the cohorts of students that have come together here and the experiences you all had, not only in the classroom with folks from all, all around the world and all across the country who have global mindsets, but outside of the classroom. We're trying to reinvent that tremendous global village that was in Glendale here in downtown Phoenix. Uh, with all of our historic traditions like regional night and many others, as well as new traditions. Uh, so recruiting uh, that globally diverse, high quality student body is a top uh, priority. A second major priority for us is to reinvigorate our executive education, which was so critical to not only uh, our rankings, uh, which is absolutely important to us to, to advance, but also to the innovation in the way we learned and we taught in the graduate and, and now undergraduate. That's where a lot of the innovation and uh, experience comes from, is the executive education uh, side. Uh, and then the third, of course, is to, to make sure that you know we design and we build uh, a, a new space, permanent space for Thunderbird going forward that is really worthy, as I said, of the Thunderbird tradition and leaning into the 21st century. Uh, and our goal is to have you all come um, from around the world. We'll have our next global reunion in Tokyo, as you all know, um, next September. But the goal is to complete the building and to open it in April of 2021 when Thunderbird turns 75. And we see that as an incredibly important milestone where we show to the world and demonstrate to, to the world again that not only has Thunderbird survived, but it's thriving. And it truly is that vanguard of the vanguard of global leadership management and business education. Again. So I'm gonna stop there. There are many other things I'd love to share. I think what I, the, the sort of red thread through it is, there's a lot of hard work we still have to do. There will be bumps along the road, but we've made a, a lot of progress just in a short period of time building on some of the foundations which were developed over the last three or four years as we became part of um, the ASU Knowledge Enterprise uh, and using the assets across ASU to advance Thunderbird. And so I'm going to end with kind of a line that we've heard from one of our my corresponding deans is well, my and our approach now is to think about that ASU didn't really acquire Thunderbird, but we acquired ASU. And there's a range of possibilities, assets, partnerships, collaborations that are possible for us. And we're exploiting all of those uh, as we make Thunderbird uh, 
you know, um, in the 21st century, what it was, you know, in the 20th century, uh, the very best place for global leadership has been business education. So let me pause there and let's get some questions and conversation going. And you can either unmute yourself and ask questions through the audio, or if it's easier, you're also welcome to um, type in questions. Robin's monitoring our chat and um, can read the questions for you. <laughs> Don't be bashful. Someone's talking. Someone's talking. We can't hear you. Okay. If, if we can, yeah, it doesn't sound like we can hear, so we might have to resort to the chat if we can't. Hello, this is Stan Duvall. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you now. Great. Thanks, Stan. Hello there. I, uh, I, that was uh, great. I, I took as much uh, notes as I could quickly. I, I guess first I'd like to say, you know, thanks. I was, <laughs> I was lucky to just be there, but I, I haven't got to hear, you know, I haven't been able to hear the full vision and it's uh, spectacular. And uh, uh, I, I just took a, uh, as much notes as I could really quickly. Is this something we can uh, share or should share with the chapter? And I hand wrote notes as fast as I could. Is there is there a written version of this I should share? So you should definitely share everything I you know shared in quick order. But we could also share some uh, slide decks, uh, versions of slide decks that we can you know get out there and you all can use to share with the chapters uh, wherever you may be for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we'll do um, in the meeting minutes that we always send out after these calls, we're, we have a recording of this call, but we also have additional materials that we'll attach to those minutes that you can use to either email out to your chapters or if you want to print and take some hard copies to the next first Tuesday, you can do that as well. Um, but we'll get everything out to you in the next few days um, so that you can share everything. But yes, that's, we'd love for you to do that. So thank you so much. Okay, um, we'll do. And then the, the chat, um, is there a plan to reinvigorate the language training? I'm really glad you asked that. I apologize, but I didn't highlight that. We're working really hard to bring language back as a graduation requirement. We haven't fully got there, partly because we're figuring it out how to do it here in the ASU system. Um, we uh, really, are, you know, going back to kind of sort of bringing back the core traditions and differentiators of Thunderbird language, as you all know, and I people who believe in was one of those, as we also lean into this sort of 21st century, as I've been saying. So what I can say is we're 100% committed to it, two, we're hard at work, we're making some progress. We're not sure we can do it for next, you know, the fall of 2019, but our goal is very much to get it done by fall of 2020. There's a combination of ways we're thinking about doing it, including potentially some, you know, sort of uh, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality way of teaching language, languages these to, today. Um, some, are pro, some are connecting with our applied learning. So we're, we're exploring a lot of different options, but there's a 100% commitment to bring languages back in as robust a way uh, as we can, given our sort of new environment uh, here at ASU. From the LA chapter, can you guys hear me? Hi, Mila. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Hi, this is really great. Um, I'm very excited of the plans and what you guys are going to be doing. One of the things um, I have is we do have one of the recruiting events happening this Sunday here in the LA area, and we've got some great response from alumni. So we've got a handful of alumni that's going to be attending to help with the event and talking to prospective students. The question, because you know many of us have graduated, it's been so long. Are there talking points or key, you know, things that um, that we can, you know, get out there with these prospective students? It would be helpful to have something like that. And I don't know if you can have something for us. Um, we are working with Becca Clark, um, but it would be really helpful. And then that's even just for future as well. Um, that would be really helpful because out here in LA, you know, we do. We have a lot of networking going on and, and um, you know, we'd love to help you guys with the recruiting. And also, um, second note, uh, I'm, I'm actually a graduate of executive ed. And if you guys 
decide that you want to have a panel or um, do a recruiting event. I know firsthand, I know about four of us who are out here. There's probably more, but, um, you know, we definitely let me know if that's something you guys want to explore in the LA area. So on the second, so sure, and then on the first, we're just finishing up the sort of new slicks that kind of update uh, what we're we've done with it. Um, and our hope is that we can get that to you uh, before the Sunday event. Uh, we're working really hard on that, but more generally, we're going to get that out to everyone um, as soon as they're ready, and hopefully in the next couple of days. Okay. Great. Thank you. And by the way, I went to ISEC. I think you know that in DC. Um, and we're exploring the possibility of going to the global leadership event in Tunisia in January or February. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. I'm really happy to hear that. In fact, we did a happy hour last Thursday with the uh, LA chapter, the ISEC alumni LA chapter, and that and that went you know that went well. But what came out of it was actually um, one of the ISEC alumni was interested in Thunderbird. Wow. So those are the kinds wow, of things I'd love to see happen. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> well, we'll see, you know, we have a photo over, I'm going to put underneath for, you know, future T-Bird, but, you know, those are the things I see. It also helps to get our name out and, you know, I really want to get um, Thunderbird back in the LA community, the business community. Um, you know, I've talked to a handful of people and they're like, oh, we thought the school is dead. And I'm like, no, it's far from that, you know. I really want alumni that I have helping me to volunteer to really, you know, get us back out there. So, you know, um, working with you guys, anything you can provide us in terms of information and also with alumni too, because I notice there's a lot of alumni out there that are very confused about how to get a hold of the school. I don't know why, but they are. So, you know, I want to try to help, uh, you know, get that get that uh, confusion resolved, you know, as soon Thanks as possible. Yes, more. So thank you, guys. Great. <laughs> so we're also, as, as folks are thinking about, we're also working on a, a potential scholarship program. We aren't all the way there, so I, I wish I wanted to be able to announce it at our calls, but hopefully, if all goes well, we'll we're going to have we have a, a potential pledge for matching scholarships, where for every dollar we raise, uh, 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 one of our key donors is willing to put in a dollar up to two million dollars a year for the next three years. We're going to hopefully be able to announce that more officially uh, once we, we kind of get to the finish line on some of the final negotiations. Uh, we hope that if that does turn out to work out, which we're really excited about uh, launching. You all in the chapters can help um, think about how that that that, that matching scholarships can be raised. You know, we've talked to chapters around the country and around the world about having uh, a scholarship from different chapters that could be matched dollar for dollar by this this pledge if it all works out, and that would be really exciting because that would also help us be able to draw in this globally diverse student body. Um, as you know, as you all know, the opportunity cost of graduate education has become more and more um, challenging. So we'll, we'll share more with that, hopefully as we make, you know, the, make progress uh, finalizing that. Uh, but more generally, as you know, scholarships, in addition to the recruitment, scholarships, recruit, uh, internships, uh, and then helping our wonderful students uh, find employment out there in, in the work world, uh, where you all are, are really you know, leaders and managers we're always grateful for that. We know that it meant a lot to most, if not all of you, and it certainly does to them. I mean, when Stan was here, it was great just this past weekend for him to engage um, with all of our new EMGM students. They, it means a lot, as you know, to be connected to our amazing alumni like yourselves around the world. Hi, this is Alan in Orlando. I'd like to jump in next if I can. Um, I've been talking with, so we're trying to get the chapter restarted here and I've been talking with people in the area and of course they're very interested in what's going on with the school and with the changes. I've been uh, taking uh, some notes of the things you've said here already and uh, 
So I want to add a what I guess would be a third bullet point to the, the points now then that the chapter leaders have brought up here. We talked about needing notes about your plans, uh, having talking points about Thunderbird in general. But some of the uh, alumni here have been talking about what is ASU going to do to Thunderbird? And of course, you've given us very good details about what Thunderbird's gonna do. You just explained how uh, ASU didn't acquire Thunderbird, but Thunderbird acquired ASU, which I think is a great uh, uh, way to explain things that will help calm people and, and make them feel good about the overall arrangement. I was very fortunate to be out there in April when uh, everybody uh, went out to see where the new building would be uh, built and listened to your speech. I listened to Dr. Crow's speech also. And the things that Dr. Crow said, he explained how Thunderbird would uh, stand alongside some of the other schools, not that it would be integrated or pulled in, but how it would fit beside everything else that's going on in ASU. And if you can include some of those ideas in uh, the, the notes and the plans for the future so that we can understand how it fits into the bigger picture and, and feel good about the fact that it's not going to be absorbed by ASU or that there will still be this uh, identity and that ASU also believes that there will be that uh, independent identity, then I think uh, that would be very helpful to the uh, alumni base that's out there. Uh, we can certainly do that, uh, Alan. And I just want to reinforce that all that I've been, you know, heard prior to my, all I heard prior to my, you know, about while I was being recruited and since I've been here, what I've experienced is complete commitment by Michael and all of the leadership and all my colleagues, other deans across ASU for everything we're trying to do at Thunderbird to support us, to partner with us. And, um, you know, the investment that they put in just in terms of the new temporary space we're in here, which is truly fabulous, an investment that's being put into the new building, new faculty that we're going to be hiring. So in many ways, uh, I would argue that not only is, is ASU 100% um, be behind Thunderbird, they've doubled and tripled down in terms of the future. Uh, and the goal there, I would say, is both ensuring and supporting that Thunderbird retains its independence and its identity and its traditions, but also this notion that there's a set of resources and assets for Thunderbird across ASU that helps us, that supports us, that gives us the capacity to, to get back to number one as we all know we should. So we'll put more of that um, into, we'll try to share more of that as it comes through, but you know, whether that's everything from uh, our career management center working more closely with career management across ASU to get more employment opportunities for our students. I just did, I was one of the two deans who gave a talk to employers from around the world that came and we're you know, finally starting to rebuild those relationships with employers and ASU has been very supportive and their relationships have helped us in that area. Uh, two, obviously the, um, as I mentioned, the investment in the new building and the partnership we have with university architects. Uh, we're gonna be putting out a view book, uh, a really wonderful uh, sort of, sort of for glossy brochure on, on Thunderbird um, and where we are in terms of what we're doing in our programs and our faculty and our students and our alumni and the hub, the ASU hub, the marketing hub is playing a central role in supporting us. So we feel incredibly supported by our partners across in the senior leadership at ASU and everything we're doing on curriculum, for example, we're transforming the curriculum in sort of in ways and, and you know, there's always bureaucracy in a larger institution, uh, public university. But I've been, as you know, all over the world and, and in other major public universities, and the speed with which we can get things done here is really quite remarkable. And I think you all have heard that for the fourth year in a row, ASU um, was, uh, you know, ranked number one for innovation, which is not just the ranking. It has a, it's really how it, the institution works. And given that we're always been innovative and will continue to be at Thunderbird, it only reinforces that sort of innovation spirit. Um, and capacity. So we will continue to sort of share ways in which um, being part of ASU is not not only not taking away from Thunderbird as an independent institution, but providing us with real resources and opportunities that frankly uh, we couldn't have had in, in otherwise, uh, which is really exciting. My name is Rob Prescott. Colorado. Hi, Rob. May I go next? 
Yes, Please do. <laughs> hey, Dr. Kagram, I have a question for you. I mean, the school, for all intents and purposes, failed, and now we're coming back. Is there a benchmark institution that has gone through something like this, as an example? You know, I, that's a great question. First of all, as most people know, please call me Sanjeev. Um, I see you all. Sanjeev, over. okay. <laughs> part of the Thunderbird family. <laughs> I've been fortunate to become part of. Um, you know, I've looked around, uh, Rob, and, and I haven't seen anything quite like this. Um, we know that, you know, murders right. in, in the private sector happen all the time, most often times, yeah. rare, not very well. <laughs> and despite all of our right. knowledge and experience and wisdom, um, mergers and acquisitions in higher education, even in the United States, uh, rarely happen. Uh, and certainly not with an institution, like you said, that was struggling um, at the very least uh, as much as Thunderbird was. So we're really, it's an unprecedented kind of situation. We are definitely sure. in a turnaround and a transformation at the same time. I uh, often laughingly say we're rebuilding the plane as we fly it. And it very much is that case. Uh, what I do feel strongly about and believe, and it's sort of, and I'm confident in this, that there are some foundations that have been laid over the last four years. Uh, and now we are sort of poised to catapult back. It, and, and I want to be careful of the term catapult because it's not going to be, you know, we're just going to spring back to the, the place we should be. But we, we are in an upward, we're on an upward trajectory. Uh, and if we continue to put our nose to the grindstone and work hard and we have your support, our amazing alums around the world, I am a bird. So there's nothing like this that I've been able to find in higher education, but I'm open <laughs> if you find anything or anyone else finds it because we'd love to learn from other experience. Uh, I think this is going to be the case study on um, <laughs> bringing a, uh, an amazing higher education institution back to life uh, for, for the foreseeable future. Well, there's nothing wrong with being in, in uncharted territory. I mean, it's, it, it, it becomes um, a challenge. It's, 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 it's new. And Thunderbird is so unique. I mean, we have, we have such an opportunity to, to move forward. And the alumni is really where it's at, the, the, way, the way I see it. And, and if we can really work you know, guerrilla marketing, one-to-one. -one. I mean, people are asking questions, and if we can keep communicating the message that the school is coming back, acknowledge that it happened. I mean, no one loves talking about difficulty, but things happen in business. Things happen all the time. We all live on the verge. I mean, it's a challenging Absolutely. world out there. And um, I, I think the guerrilla marketing aspect, you know, you're invited, a way to reconnect, a way to re, re, uh, rejuvenate. I think anything that we can do, even on a marketing perspective, could, could help us a lot. And we're about, you know, as part of the reorganization that I uh, had to do and I felt was the appropriate thing to do, even before I started, you know, officially full time, we're bringing in some new capacity on the branding and marketing side, including a new uh, head of branding and marketing. So we're looking forward to that person working with the team here and all of you, whether it's guerrilla marketing, new, new digital marketing, all sorts of ways that we can reinvent our brand, re-institute uh, its, its grandeur. Um, you know, and again, I think what we need all of your support on is sort of reclaiming all the power and the promise and the sort of potential of our traditions, as well as saying we are ready to embrace the 21st century. Because the way I kind of interpret Thunderbird's history is that Thunderbird never worry about risking and, uh, being on the frontier, and we want to get back to that. We want to be, uh, keep using this language, the vanguard of the vanguard. That's what was what catapulted and took Thunderbird to its great glory, and that's what will get us back there um, as we go forward. Well, I just want to, I know that Pedro's going to, uh, you know, sort of close the meeting. I want to personally thank you all for all you do for Thunderbird for engaging in this conversation. Obviously, you're engaging with Patrick and Robin and Patrick and many others on our team. Uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing a lot of you as I make my way around the world. I will say that 
right now, um, as much as I want to be everywhere and meet all of you in person, and I hope you'll agree with me, the top priority for me is to be here to make sure we get our house in order so that, you know, not only do we have the foundations, but we're building the, you know, the house back up and, and, and go forward. But I'll be getting around, and we're headed on, out to Asia very soon for a, for a tour through our new office in, in, in Tokyo Hub to Penang, where we're going to have a wonderful event with our uh, with TIA, Thunderbird, and ASU on sustainable business, Indonesia, South Korea. Um, so we'll get out there as much as possible. I've never hesitated traveling, but right now the focus is uh, to really get, make sure that we're strong here, sort of speak on the home front. And we'll continue to engage virtually and we'll get out these materials that we talked about. So again, I want to thank the team and all of you for the time and opportunity. Yeah, thank you everyone for, for joining. Um, again, we will send out meetings, uh, meeting minutes and recordings um, and materials that you can then uh, share with everybody in the chapter. We really want this to be a springboard and, and you to be um, you know, empowered with the information that you need to, to spread the mes message within the chapters. We hope that, um, you know, we talked a lot about the events that we have coming up and we hope you'll help us to promote those events and encourage people to attend. I know in this call especially, we have a number of our chapter leaders from Asia who are participating and um, hopefully you're helping to spread the word about the conference in Penang, which is coming up. I think today is the deadline for the early registration. Um, and I know um, there'll be a number of, of alumni there. I think there are at over 100 people registered now and we're looking forward to, um, to building on that. Um, we also have a Paris Business Forum um, that the chapter of Paris is putting on. October 25th. So for those of you who may be in Europe around that time, we hope you'll join um, for that as well. Rob um, mentioned, and we talked about on the last call in February, we have the ski weekend coming up and we're looking forward um, to having faculty there and then a business forum that they've now added to the ski weekend. Um, so a lot of opportunities coming up, many things going on, and we hope that um, you will all be able to participate in some of those. But as Sanjeev said, we're looking forward to expanding on also communication through these um, digital platforms as well, because we realize with 170 chapters, we can't get to everyone, but we want to continue to, um, you know, to have opportunities for, for us, for faculty, for others to reach out, and, and hopefully we can build on more of this too. So thank you all for joining. Um, let us know again, um, you know, we mentioned the open house in November, but if you are in Phoenix at any other time, um, definitely let us know when you're in town. We always love to see people as they travel through. We're actually very close to the airport now, so it's a little easier to do that as well. And um, reach out to us with any questions at any time. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you, Sanji, for your hard work. <laughs> it's the whole team. We're all doing it together, and all of you too. So thank you all. I understand. Thank, thank you, guys.